मैं तो दिल्ली दिल्ली में रहता हूँ और रेडियो फीजी बहुत रेडियो फीजी रोज सुनता हूँ रेडियो फीजी टू देश की धड़कन In the news tonight, Fiji set to see an influx of tourists amid COVID-19. Unruly behaviour of students increases. And New Zealand Prime Minister to arrive in Fiji tomorrow. From the studios of FBC Suva, Amrita Sagar. With the deadly COVID-19 killing more than 2,000 people in mainland China and other countries, Fiji has been deemed as one of the safest tourist destinations. This in turn is said to see an influx of tourists particularly from Australia heading to the Pacific Islands and Fiji could set to benefit in a big way. The virus, which started in December last year, has quickly spread to more than 25 countries. However, Fiji has remained safe with no suspected or confirmed cases of COVID-19. Parinta Prakash has more. Talks within the Australian tourism sector is that Asia's loss could be a gain for nations like Fiji. The tourism ministry remaining optimistic that more tourists will choose Fiji. Well, coronavirus, uh, in most cases, it's not really an opportunity because we've seen how the tourism number uh, will be affected and all other businesses linked to tourism will be affected. But again, from Fiji's perspective, we see that as an opportunity now because Fiji is a very safe destination. We have no record of coronavirus and our <coughs> traditional partners, Australia and New Zealand, uh, they will definitely consider uh, coming to Fiji. Um, one, it's safe and to its closer. Premila Kumar says while the virus has affected the tourism sector, the hotels should take advantage and work for the future. And because of various travel ban and travel restrictions, people who genuinely want to come to Fiji, they can't. So that has affected our, our numbers. And we have heard from the tourism sector as well that uh, there has been a number of cancellations and so forth. So perhaps this is the time for the hotels to refurbish, prepare themselves, and um, wait for, for, for um, this emergency period to be over, and then uh, we are back in business. She says for the moment, the marketing strategy needs to be changed and encourage more local people to use the facilities. Kumar is also calling on people to stop circulating wrong information as Fiji has put in precautionary measure to stop the virus from entering our borders. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. The education cases of coronavirus have more than doubled this weekend in South Korea. The death toll worldwide now stands at 2,500 with nearly 80,000 people infected. There are concerns we're edging closer to a global pandemic. The Education Ministry says the unruly behaviour of students is becoming more prevalent and difficult to deal with at times. Recently, there, have been an, there has been an increase in the number of assault cases involving students. Earlier this week, a student from a prominent school appeared in the Suva Magistrates Court for allegedly assaulting another student, while two other accomplices face suspension. Print Prakash once again. While students are protected by teachers within the school premises, the education minister says it becomes a challenge after school hours. We are guided by the child protection policy. We are guided by the behavior management policy. But um, in reality, sometimes it becomes very difficult for us to deal with the behavior of students these days. It, it, it's not a general behavior across the country, but there are certain schools where we will have to see what we can do. Education Minister Rosie Agbar says parents also have a major role in disciplining their children. Parental roles and responsibilities can never be compromised. So we are asking parents to also step up in their role to ensure that they talk to their children about such behaviours. Because we cannot continue to let it go. And that is a major issue for us at the Ministry now. The Education Minister says bullying is another major area of concern for them. According to the International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking report, there were over 27,000 violence cases registered in schools in 2018. Some of these offences include slapping, punching, bullying and swearing. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Following a week-long parliament seating, Attorney General Ayan Said Kayum spoke out on a number of issues that were pointed out in the August House. 
Seth Kayyum says since the beginning of Parliament, the opposition has been very economical with the truth and in some aspects have even lied. Lena Rees tells us more. According to the Attorney General, a number of issues highlighted by the opposition in this year's first Parliament sitting were misrepresented. The other, uh, of course, economical truth statement was Honorable Govoka. The way it was represented as if there was mining going on in Singatoga River, along the banks of the Singatoga River. No mining is taking place. Everybody knows that. But again, Honorable Govoka misrepresented that. This whole week has actually been replete. Honorable Niko Noikula making statements, oh, there's no money. And then when it was said to him, how come his salary is being paid? He said, oh, Dino. I mean, what utter nonsense. Opposition leader Sitiveni Romboka says lies and truths are now subjective, but it depends on the people. You may be able to uh, bury the uh, arguments of uh, the uh, country going through difficult times uh, through words. People see, people feel what's happening. Maybe he's uh, telling the truth that there is no shortage of funds. Perhaps it's the allocation of funds and uh, the allocation of funds where it matters for the people. The next parliament sitting will be held on the 16th of next month. Lena Rees, FBC News. Well, as part of a visit to Fiji, New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinta Ardern will pay her respects to the three Fijians who were killed in the Christchurch terror attack in March last year. Two consecutive terrorist shooting attacks occurred at two mosques in Christchurch during a Friday prayer. 58-year-old Ashraf Ali Razat of Narere, Imam Hafiz Musa Patel of Lotoka and Ashraf Ali were among the 51 who were killed in the shooting carried out by 28-year-old Brenton Tarrant. During her three days trip, Ardern will also meet with Prime Minister Varenga Manimarama to address students at the University of the South Pacific and meet Fijian women leaders in government, business and civil society. It will be the first time a New Zealand Prime Minister has visited Fiji in four years and comes during the 50th anniversary of Fiji's independence. Up ahead, FRA looks into plea of Koromakawa villages. An unsuccessful Fijian New Grills owner shares a business journey. Details after the break. Radio Fiji One, Nando Moiviti. While many rural communities now have access to better roads and infrastructure, a small community just outside of Lambasa town still have to walk to access public transportation and other basic services. Koromakawa village in the district of Wairiki in the Kaundrove is only approximately 45 minutes by car from Lambasa town, but the road condition is not fit for vehicles. Eleanor Turangayevu explains. It's almost 5 p.m. and these primary school students are finally home, a little over two hours since they finished classes. These students walk close to six kilometers every day to and from school. For moms whose children are in secondary school, they get up at 3 a.m. to prepare their children and they leave home at 4 a.m. to catch the 6 a.m. bus to Lambasa. For those in primary school, they leave home at 5 a.m. These children of Kormakao village in Weiriki, the Kaunrove, are now used to the routine of leaving home early to get to school on time, but it's having an impact on their performance in school. Well, we have received complaints from the teachers uh, that their lunch goes bad by lunchtime because it's been prepared at 3 a.m. Plus, when they get to the schools, they are tired. They can't concentrate. The schoolwork is affected. Walking to and from school and to the main road to access public transportation to take their produce to the market has been a practice in this village for generations. We compare our life with their life. Oh, my God, this is out of our world, man. There is already a road that reaches the village, but over the years the condition has worsened. When it rains, the road is really bad, so the children don't go to school at all. Requests for road repairs and maintenance have been made, even right up to the head of government. We are again pleading with the Prime Minister to please assist us with regards to our road. The Fiji Roads Authority has been tasked with looking into the pleas of the villagers. There are 42 students in Koromakao village who travel daily to attend school at Korotari Winimoli, 
o in Lambasa Town. Eleanor Turangayview, FBC News. The Fisheries Ministry still has with it the Kawakawa and Donu that was confiscated from a vessel which birthed at Port Moiwai in Suva last year. More than 260 kilograms of fish was taken from the vessel during the ban period. Minister responsible Semi Kore Lavisao says the case is in court and the government will make a decision on what will be done with the confiscated stock. Kore Lavisao says there are regulations in place on how to get rid of the fish. The vessel was raided by fisheries officers following its return from the Lao Group in July. Uh, a legal matter that we cannot just simply make a decision by ourselves. It's still, uh, it's still there. I think uh, the whole issue is the volume that we have. If it was just basically one you know, limited uh, stock, then it is easy to, uh, to get rid of it. But uh, it's quite a, a big amount that we need to uh, deal with. In an effort to educate the younger generation on the importance of music, a Lotoka, a Lotoka businessman who will hold a children-focused concert next month. Krishna Sami is organizing a concert which will feature singers from overseas and a few locals. Sami says he's been teaching a few kids in his area on how to play different instruments, which is also keeping them out of trouble. He believes the concert will be an educational one. It will be held on the 13th of next month in Lotoka with proceeds going towards a good cause. And why I am doing this so much because I have seen, I have seen the power of music. I have seen how it connects to you and how it brings the children to the right uh, forum. These children who knows nothing, I spend my time. It's only because the parents are here. The parents' support are tremendous. Sometimes it's the smallest decisions that can change your life forever. 37-year-old Sikipio Fiaki, owner of New Grills, is still coming to terms with the changes that have taken him from representing Fiji in rugby and athletics to owning one of the country's first commercial smokehouse. Lena Reese with this success story. Successful Fijians is brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank, your partner in progress. His dad was involved in the tourism industry, and since then, serving others became a part of Siki Piofiaki's life journey. Attending nine primary schools might have been a challenge, but with a passion of hospitality and food, nothing was impossible. Passion for cooking, I can actually say this came from my mother. Um, because we moved around a lot, um, you couldn't identify yourself as this person that was like, I felt like you feel like a no man. So you tend to eat everywhere. The thing about how mom made it easier was because food that you did not like, you tend to like after. She made things happen without all the ingredients in the world. She made it simple and it was the way I liked it. Like most young boys, Fiaki was competitive and later had some tough personal decisions to make. It's from six and over grammar. In school, I was pretty much a rugby player or a athletics person. Uh, represented Fiji in athletics, tried a lot for the Fiji team. I was actually a pretty good rugby player. And then a lot of things just changed after that because of choices that I made. And um, for me, cooking was the second chance. Nobody will understand it, but if I did not make that decision, I wouldn't be here today. After hitting rock bottom six years ago, Fiaki knew changing his perspective was the biggest hurdle to overcome in order to make his dream a reality. I never knew a single thing about smoking. I knew a lot about cooking, um, cooking meat specifically. This was just another um, uh, way of cooking that I found intriguing because it was something new. I met up a few, with a few friends of mine and they were already smoking at the time. And they were the first people that actually were doing it, that I tried it and... I had a feeling that I could do something a bit, a bit better. Just because I had a very competitive side towards a lot of things. You know, you try and be better at anything or everything. With a buzzing interest in smoking food, the father of three was keen to share the product of his newfound passion with people. For me, food is all about sharing. Like, um, it's no use cooking, a cooking something that you will enjoy yourself. Food is all about, is, food is about enjoying it with somebody. So um, that's exactly how I was able to like 
pushing the, the meats out. The idea of a business was never a thought. The idea of sharing the food was a, the first thought. People enjoyed it. Uh, people were asking me to do, you know, orders for them. And then the rock mark started. Fiaki's love for smoked food became a venture now known as New Grills, and five years after his first rock market, he now owns his very own restaurant. Lena Reese, FBC News. Successful Fijians is brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank, your partner in progress. And Fiji Rap Trio wins this and more coming up. My name is Neha and I'm from Kadavi and Mirchi FM, it's hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Tyson Fury is the new World Boxing Council heavyweight champion after his seventh round win against Deontay Wilder. Referee Kenny Bayless had to stop at the fight at the request of Wilder's corner after Fury punished the former WBC champ in every aspect. Avinash Swami gave himself a perfect belated birthday gift as he netted four goals for Nandi and its 5-0 win over Nasinu in the Vodafone Premier League today. The former Bar and Fiji rep who joined the Jet Setters this season was in sensational form a day after celebrating his birthday. A 1-0 lead in the first half was soon turned into a 5-0 thrashing in the second half with Swami netting in four goals and Dusiate Matarerenga with the fifth goal. The win was second for Nandi this season and welcome relief for coach Kamal Swami who endured two consecutive losses. The win takes Nandi to the third place on the points table with six points. The star-studded Fiji rep team captained by Cheryl Ma has scooped the Nationals Coca-Cola Munichan Triples Tournament Women's Division Trophy. Winning the tournament with a set of new players, Ma says it's a good build-up to the World Outdoor Bowls Championship in May. Talei Materakula with the story. Impressed with the win, skipper Cheryl Ma says the bowlers worked together as a team and executed their combinations well. I think the girls have actually put into practice what we've been training uh, because our um, third game was actually quite tough. We were losing when we initially started. Uh, all I said to them was, look, you know, relax, play how you've been taught. We came out victors, even though it was a close game. And I, I think that uh, they've actually improved right throughout the tournament. With the World Outdoor Bowls Championship just three months away, Ma says there are areas that still need work. Uh, we're looking at uh, just getting more consistent uh, with our drawing because that's the most important thing on the fast screens and to also work on our shots which are through the head shots, on shots and drives. Unable to defend his title this year, Semesa Neservati says the tournament has provided a good build-up campaign to the championship. I believe uh, the more preparation, the, the more effort we put into our practice, the better for, for us. And also, I, I feel that it's good to see if we can get the best out of each place so that we can have a formidable combination. Cheryl Ma, Loretta Kotesuva and Elizabeth Modewai will represent Fiji in the World Bowls Championship in Australia. The men's triples will feature Semesane Servati, Kushal Pile and Ravinesh Prasad. Talima Terkula, FBC Sports. The Senior Rugby League under-19 coach Asaeli Masilada says they will not take any teams lightly. Masilada says Nasinu has a more daunting task awaiting them with the quarterfinal rounds to be played this coming weekend. The quarters will see the best eight teams from the southern, southeastern and western division vie for a place in the semis. Masilada adds Nasinu will take one game at a time. I believe we'll get to play a team from the western divisions in the quarterfinal. There's a lot of talent and skills among these players and we will provide the same ruthless display we did against RKS. We will put up our best performance in the quarterfinal against whatever team we'll meet. The Brumbies finally broke the drought on their losing streak in Hamilton after a 26-14 win over the Chiefs. After suffering a last-minute loss to the Highlanders last week, the Brumbies held the fort with desperation to deny the Chiefs any comeback. The Reds finally registered their first win in the Super Rugby season, thrashing the Sunwolves 64 points to 5. The Stormers have made a 100% winning record so far this Super Rugby season after defeating the Lions, the Bulls and the Hurricanes. The side made four out of four after a 17-7 win over the Jaguares. 
Gabriel Jesus came off the bench to score a late winner as Manchester City beat Leicester 1-0 in the English Premier League this morning. Partly cloudy conditions with brief showers was experienced over the eastern and the interior parts of the larger islands, but fine weather prevailed over the rest of the Fiji group, with light isolated showers developing in the afternoon. Now onto the west, it was sunny conditions that was experienced mostly with Nandi, Lotoka and Ba hitting the 30s. Eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, there were light showers in a few areas, but warm conditions prevailed otherwise. And up north, another fine day with Lambasa hitting 33 degrees this afternoon at sea. Southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas are forecast. For the tides, the next high tide is at 5.59 tomorrow morning, followed by low tide at 11.42 a.m. Sunrise is at 6.07. Now for tomorrow, you can expect the day to be fine and dry, the dry weather to continue. But some showers are expected in the two larger islands. Tomorrow's temperatures will still be in the low 30s. As for the further outlook, cloudy periods with some showers over the eastern parts and the interior of the larger islands. Elsewhere, it should be fine apart from afternoon or evening showers and possible thunderstorms. Recapping the main stories, Fiji is set to see an influx of tourists amid COVID-19. Unruly behaviour of students increases. And the New Zealand Prime Minister to arrive in Fiji tomorrow. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station Gold FM onto our poll question segment. This week, we're asking should politicians who spread fake news be prosecuted? Do visit our FBC website to answer. You can continue to send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or you can also share it with us via our Facebook page, FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us those news tips at FBC News or hashtag FBC News. And that was your FBC News for tonight. Until next time, good night. Bula, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Gold FM. Only the classic hits.